As a kid what's the creepiest, most WTF thing you ever noticed about another kid's family? When I was in first or second grade I was at a friend's house and forgot to turn off the lights when I left the bathroom. My friend's dad lost his sheet. He cussed me out, made me stand in a corner, and wouldn't let me leave. Until I wrote I will not forget to turn off the lights when I leave a room 100 or so times. It was my first and last time going to that friend's house. I noticed that all of the rooms in this kid's house could only be locked from the outside of the room. I thought that only existed in horror movies. Not really creepy, but definitely WTF worthy. I was friends with a girl growing up, and she didn't come from a very clean home. All the time there were clothes in huge piles all over her bathroom floor. Okay, whatever. But for some unknown reason no one in her family ever flushed the toilet. They would sit, sheet, and just go on with their life. Every once in a while, when the bowl got too full, someone would just try to flush ethos resulting in weak old sheet, and piss pouring out in the floor all over this laundry. 9 times out of 10 they would kick around these clothes then just leave the scene. They constantly bought new clothes. The worst thing this was all just completely normal to them. This one has a happy ending. My dad was a contractor, and I made friends with one of his employee's sons, because we'd always end up on the job site with our dads. The first time I slept over at his house I got there after dark. The house was a giant one room log cabin. The kid had like 5 siblings and all their bedrooms were just sectioned off with walls made of clotheslines and sheets. Even the bathroom didn't have walls. It was just this massive structure with a maze of hanging sheets everywhere. It made me really uncomfortable that night. Fast forward to the next morning, when we go outside to play. We walk out the back door, and there's a giant mansion in the backyard. Actually it was more like this cabin was in the front yard of a mansion. Turns out the dad had bought the land, and built a cabin for the family to live in temporarily, while he built their dream home. He gave every member of the family some awesome feature in their new room, and it remains one of the coolest, most unique homes I've ever been in. We're all still friends to this day and I would describe them as the most loving family that I know. When I was about 12 to 13, I had this friend who lived in a house with her mother and four other sisters. One day I went to her place, while on my period, and ended up using her washroom to change my tampon. I put the used one in the garbage can which had a lid completely wrapped up in toilet paper. Later in the night, right before dinner, we are all sitting at the table waiting for their mother, when we suddenly all hear her screaming from the bathroom who has their period, who used a tampon. She came rushing down and all the sisters denied having this. I ended up sheepishly coming clean, to which she said, and your mother lets you use tampons? Don't you know what that does to your body? She then proceeded to make a hold in a conversation out of why tampons are horrible for me and why they've ruined my purity forever and bragged about how her daughters would never use anything so primitive. Needless to say I never went there ever again. I thought it was so weird and WTF why because the only way she would have seen my used tampon is if she had actually gone through the garbage looking for something incriminating. The thing is. That's totally something this woman would do, to try and find something to yell at her daughters about. When I was about 11 to 12 I had a friend, that lived in a really big house in my neighborhood. We were never allowed to go to her house, outside or inside. One day, we were riding bikes and I fell right near her house and I insisted we get a napkin from her house to clean the blood. She was really weird about it. I only went into the kitchen and there was a door that was closed. She opened it and yelled that I was in the house. Her mom came in. She was a very pretty woman and was wearing a silk robe. She told us to hurry up and and then sent us on our way. About 3 months later they were in the news for running an illegal escort service out of their home. Both of her parents went to jail and my friend was sent to Florida to live with her grandma. I can't imagine what her life was like during that time or afterwards. Neighbor kid took out a stick of butter and started dipping it into a canister of Kool-Aid. After licking all the mix off the butter he repeated it over and over as if it was that fun dip candy. It skeeved me out and I declined his generosity when he offered me the Kool-Aid and the butter. His older sisters were there and they said they do this all the time. It's great. Went to a friend's house and could hardly breathe when I stepped through the front door. 
They had like 20 dog skirts, and would just let them piss, and cheat anywhere in the house the smell of ammonia was so strong I could barely breathe. It was so bad that all the floorboards were just soaked with urine and were rotted. I used to hang out with a kid, whose family not only didn't have a litter box for the cat, but wouldn't pick up the cat sheet either. The only reason I went over there was, because he had an Atari 2600. I always came home with cat sheet on the bottom of my shoes. So this isn't nearly as WTF as other stories on this thread, but I always find it really sad that my neighbor's dad sat on his lawnmower from dawn to dusk, so he didn't have to deal with his family. My best friend, when I was 12 had a very pretty little sister who was a couple of years younger than us. One time when I was sleeping over at his house we went into his dimly lit basement to get his mother, and she was entertaining a couple of creepy looking old men who were drunk and awfully friendly with his sister. They were asking her for kisses and to sit in their laps. His mother looked deeply depressed, and I remember feeling so strange, and so uncomfortable, that I blacked out this memory for decades. I found out a year ago, that my friend's sister killed herself at 35 leaving her 9 year old son without a mother. During primary school I was involved in an out of school, program that required traveling to another local school. Because my parents worked during the day they arranged for me to be picked up by the mother of one of other children in my class. We went back to their place, where I was to wait until my mother came to pick me up. While I was waiting her son picked up a book and his mother turned to him and said, What have I told you about touching your stepfather's stuff? She then grabbed him by the ear, and pulled him over to his bedroom shoved him in, and locked the bedroom from the outside with a heavy bolt. I can remember hearing him screaming from the other side of the door. I can't remember exactly what she said to me, but it was something along the lines of this is the way it has to be. I told my parents and needless to say I never got a lift home with them again. Also a few months later he was removed from his parents, after he set fire to his bedroom. I stayed at this girl's house on a school night for whatever reason, and we all had to take a bath. They told me to go first, but I was playing with this girl's only toy, a globe, and said I'd go last. Little did I know they all use the same freaking bath water. There were like, 5 kids and 2 adults. They all, all 7 of them, took a bath in the same water. I got pushed to the end of the line, and when my turn was up, the water was brown. I mean, no longer transparent. I cried and they called my mom, and then ran me new bath water. It would appear that they were really poor, but no. Her dad was an orthopedic surgeon. WTF. When my friend and I went swimming, when we were 9 years old, we changed at the pool. He had no scrotum. I told his mother and she said, that's okay, we know. Now, I didn't know much then, but I knew the doctors better fix those undescended testes before puberty. I was a science geek and knew this. He never got them fixed, and as an adult, one became cancerous. He's now 48 years old, unmarried and without children goddamn. Stupid parents of his. I grew up in a horrible housing estate in London, called the Aylesbury Estate. I lived on the 12th floor of a high-rise block. I made friends with a boy, called Nicky who was from Grenada, and he was black. He lived with his mother and father, or so I thought. I went round his place, to play with a new fire engine I bought with birthday money. His house was so strange. Every single light in the house was red, every ducking bulb. His mother's bedroom had a bolt lock on the inside for some reason. I saw his dad for the first time but something was amiss. He wasn't black. He was 100% white. I was creeped out for a while, I went round his place again the following week and the man he called dad had changed he was a completely different man and the same happened again and again. Here's where it gets really ducked up, his mother died, and he went into care, I scared my mum, why he didn't live with his dad. It turns out his mother was a prostitute, and had convinced Nucky, that his dad was Shappa Shifter. She convinced her son, his dad was Shappa Shifter, when they were just customers. This was about 40 years ago. I never saw Nikki again, sadly. When I was around 8 to 9 years old, there was a girl in my neighborhood that hardly anyone ever saw, outside of school. She was maybe a year younger than me. I tried talking to her a few times, and she was very very shy. She was never allowed at other kids' houses. Reasonable, I guess. There were a lot of questionable people in our town. 
However, no one was allowed over at her house either. Not even in her yard, or on her driveway. This was because, in her words, her parents didn't like kids. Okay. One friend of ours managed to see into her house a few times. Apparently all the furniture was always covered in plastic, and everything was dark. We went maybe a month without seeing her outside of school, which was normal. One weekend, a friend and I saw her walking down the sidewalk, and she told us that her father had died. Her mom told her that he started bleeding from the inside after he ate some crayons she didn't clean up, and that it was her fault for not cleaning well enough. She lived in the same house until after high school. She hardly ever spoke, and when she did, it was just a whisper. She sort of seemed like a small child a lot of the time, with how she acted and pronounced words. If I weren't just a clueless kid then, I probably would have said something to someone. When I was 8 I took a trip for a month to Alabama to visit my friend and his family. His parents were extremely Catholic and had very strong on contraceptives. One day while I was there, we took a family trip to the grocery store and poked holes in condom boxes. I didn't realize it was his, had done till years later. I still feel really bad about it. TL. Doctor friend's family made me poke holes in condoms. I had a friend in middle high school whose house no one had ever seen the interior of. Whenever we hung out, it was at someone else's house. If me or one of my other friends came by to pick her up to go somewhere, she didn't drive, we were never invited in, and had to wait outside, until she was ready. My other friends and I were always convinced her parents did some sort of top secret government work or something like that. One of my friends finally did see the inside of her house, after dropping her off, and having to pee so bad she threatened to go in the bushes in their yard. Turns out the parents were hoarders, and had stacks of papers everywhere and that's likely why no one was ever allowed inside. Not really that weird, but I remember my friend's parents used to let my friend eat a 40 pack of Timbits every day. He was super thin, so he was blessed in that sense, but I found it odd. It was almost like a ritual. One of my friend's parents used to give me homework to do. I'd go to her house and her mom would have some math or English assignment that had she had come up with for us to do. I had a friend who lived with her mom and her mom's brother. One day I was standing at the bottom of the stairs waiting for my friend to get ready, and the mother and brother were at the top of the stairs behind the banister, making out. I just stood there, and then I heard the mother whisper oh shit Chris, me, is down there, and they quickly parted ways. I never mentioned any of that to my friend, ever, not even until this day. But I did later find out, that it wasn't her mother at all, it was her much older sister, and older brother obviously, just weird. I don't know. I also had another friend who, at 15 years of age, used to sit naked on her dad's lap. Edit, Lmao. I didn't expect so many people to see this post XT for those who have been asking about the naked girl. She told me about how she would often walk around naked in the house even if her parents, including dad, were there. Then one day I went over to her house, and yes, she was completely naked and completely okay with it, and sat on her dad's lap for a hug, while we were watching a movie. The family was so unfazed by it, but personally I did have trouble keeping my eyes on the movie. Don't even ask what movie it was Lmao. Not me, but my mom had a childhood friend whose father had a glass eye, and would throw it in the bathtub with her, when she was taking a bath. What is the most strange about many of these stories is the fact that so often it's couples sharing in their weirdness. I want to know how a relationship escalates to that point where both people agree to do this one weird thing together. Surely no one meets another person thinking I bet she also would like to never flush the toilet at home until it overflows. Maybe I should ask her about it. At what point do couples agree on strange behavior? Lol. My next door neighbor, Kevin and I were buddies, because we were the youngest in the neighborhood and no one else would play with us. I would say this was, when I was 9 or 10. Anyways, his parents both worked 9 to 5 jobs and I remember them as being very nice, but in a forced sort of way. I wasn't allowed to go in their house, because they didn't let anyone in. Once I had to go to the bathroom, and as we were in his yard he let me in. Every single doorway in the house, had a curtain covering it. They made a fake hallway right at the entrance, 
So you couldn't see the living room or the kitchen I asked him why they were there, and he said his parents liked privacy. They also ate nothing but fast food. I remember the first time he had supper at my house he was shocked, and kept telling my mom he didn't have to do something like cook a meal for her children, that just because he came over, they moved kind of suddenly when I was around 11, and I remember he couldn't really tell me where they were going, or why. He couldn't give me a number or an address to keep in touch and he never called me so. It was sad. Vietnam vet father. The Doberman bit the kid. The father went outside to where the dog was chained up. Twisted its neck. Buried it on the spot. With the chain still coming up out of the ground. Attached to the stake. In middle school, I was friends with this one kid whose mom had some serious self esteem and projection issues. I remember one day she picked us up from school because my own mother was ill and proceeded to ask her son everything he ate that day, not just his packed lunch that she had made him, but snacks and whatnot. When he admitted to buying fries during lunch, she proceeded to scream at him, calling him things like unhealthy pig and almost sobbing at the very idea he might get fat, despite the fact that my friend was literally the most active, physically fit player on the baseball team. If this wasn't awkward enough, she stared me directly in the eye and said see Evan, what if you get fat and the only wife you can find is a girl like her. I threw my backpack at her. Me and Evan weren't allowed to hang out anymore, partially for that, partially because I told my mother about his nutcase mom. Went to this kid's house. He wanted to go to a nearby playground. Mom told us we'd have to wait until she was finished with whatever she was doing. 6 to 7 year old kid pulls over a chair, stands on it, and slaps his mother straight across the face with force. She is quiet for a second or two, then says okay, get your coat. Went home and thanked my mom for being her for about 12 hours straight. Visited a kid's house that lived a few bus stops before mine. Ever seen a level 5 hoarder? The house was so messy the entire family slept in the mudroom with the washer and dryer on a futon bunk bed. In the kitchen you walked on about a foot of trash and the dishes were literally stacked up to the ceiling. Only when I got older I realized I should have probably told my parents or a teacher. The boy would later end up on the 6 offender list for having 6 with a 13 year old. Colon open bracket. A couple of friends down the street had just moved across country from Georgia to California, and they were different in a lot of ways. The creepiest way, though, was when my friend poured a box of a Kono brand raisin bran for breakfast, and it was loaded with cockroaches. He proceeded to remove each roach with his hands, and then pour milk into the bowl with the naughty roach cereal and eat it. I freaked the duck out, and his dad came in and basically called me a little beach, and then poured himself a bowl of roach bran, and did the same thing, 